What's up guys? Today we're going to go over everything you need to know about dispensers. For most items, a dispenser will take any items in its inventory and it will eject them out as an item, much like if you hit Q in your inventory. Um, so this goes for most items, but there are a lot of exceptions as we saw in the intro, which I will cover now. For any type of arrow, such as normal arrows, spectral arrows, any sort of tipped arrow, that you will get shot out of the dispenser in the direction the dispenser is facing. Um, so this includes up, to the sides, as well as down. For items that the player can right-click and throw, such as eggs, uh, snowballs, bottles of enchanting, uh, any sort of splash potion, and any lingering potion, dispensers will shoot them out as if the player had right-clicked them when you activate the dispensers. Um, they will also, as you saw me hatch in a chicken, they can hatch chickens with eggs if you try hard enough. Now in order to test out the interaction with fire charges, I have an art galley here, and if we have dispensers facing it and I activate them, we can see that the fire charges get shot out as projectiles, much like a blaze would shoot out its fire charges, and it will ignite any flammable materials, otherwise it will just light them on fire, much like you used flint and steel. If you have a boat in the dispenser and there's no water, it will throw it out just like an item. Now, if I have the dispenser uh, one block above the water facing the water and I do it again, it will place the boat as an actual boat. If you have bone meal in the dispenser and the dispenser is facing a crop, and this goes for pretty much any crop that you can plant that will uh, grow, such as sapling seeds, uh, pumpkins, whatever, it will activate the bone meal as if the player had right clicked on them. Um, and you can use like a timer to kind of do it a bunch of times. It will not do it, however, so we have 12 in here. It will not do it if the crop is fully grown. Um, so you can see that it didn't use another bone meal because this wheat is fully grown in front of it. For armor stands, the dispenser will place the armor stand in the block in front of it. Um, for pieces of armor, dispensers will place the pieces of armor in the entity in front of them. Um, so in this case, I put them on the uh, armor stand. If I put these ones in the dispensers as well, and then I activate, uh, we can see that first my inventory is empty, my armor is empty, I mean. I can activate this twice, and it can see that the armor is put onto my person as well. Now when a dispenser has an empty bucket in it and it's facing uh, a source, either water block or lava block, so we have an empty bucket um, in both of these, and activate it, it will take the source blocks out of the block in front of the dispenser and it will actually put it in the bucket for you. Um, likewise, if we activate it again, it'll place the buckets back in the world, so we end up with empty buckets and the source blocks back in the world. Um, this goes for other ones as well, so I have a a powder snow bucket, as well as a uh, bucket of axolotl. If I activate it, it will place down the powdered snow and the water. If I activate it again, um, unlike the uh, other blocks, the fish does not go back into the dispenser. Um, we just have a normal water bucket. The powdered snow did in fact go back in, uh, but be aware that the fish do not go back in. For fireworks, the dispensers will shoot the fireworks in the direction that they're facing. For flint and steel, the blocks will behave a lot like as if the player had right-clicked the flint and steel. In the case of lighting things on fire, it actually lights the block uh, below the dispenser's face uh, on fire. If you have a block in front of it, it won't do anything. So in this case, we can light that on fire, we can light an unlit campfire, and we can ignite- and it will also ignite TNT. Flint and steel can also be used to ignite portals, assuming the portal frame is valid. Now in the case of TNT, and in this case now it's TNT in the dispenser and not in front of it, the dispenser will put the TNT in the direction it's facing as well as ignite it. Now similar to boats, minecarts and any minecart variants will be placed on rails if there are rails in front of the dispensers uh, just as you would if you right clicked it. If there are no rails, then it will just throw them out as an item. In the case of mob heads, uh, this goes for zombie heads, uh, wither skeleton skulls, dragon heads, um, all of that kind of stuff. If it's in a dispenser and it can put it on the entity in front of it, much like armor, it will do so. So we can see that it put the dragon head on top of my head. Uh, it will also auto-complete snow golems and iron golems if you have a carved pumpkin in the dispenser and it's able to put it in the spot that it would need to go. So if you can activate it, it makes the snow golem for you. Likewise with the iron golem, it will do that as well. 
Um, the Iron Golem requires a bit more space to do automatically, so just be aware of that. Um, that's why I have mine facing down, and there's nothing around it uh, in the area that is making it. Likewise, you can also make a Wither. Uh, if you have the skulls in the dispensers in the correct orientation, you can place more than one at the same time It'll and it will still auto-complete it, so you don't need to have like two placed and then just place the middle one or something. You can still auto-complete it in that case. Um, it will not spawn the wither if it's on uh, peaceful, so make sure that you're on peace, uh, you're on like some easy, normal, or hard mode in order for the wither to actually spawn uh, and not waste your stuff. In the case of shulker boxes, a dispenser will place it on the ground when you uh, have it in the dispenser and it will uh, be able to do that. This allows you to use it as a you know chest um, and hoppers can then uh, put items in and pull items out of the shulker box. Using the dispenser again will not pull the shulker box back into the dispenser, however. Um, you can have it drop as an item by using a piston, uh, so this still lets you kind of go in a circle if you want to place them and then get rid of it and place another one, uh, but you need to have a piston there and it's not just the dispenser that can do that. For any type of spawn egg, the dispenser will spawn the entity in the direction that the dispenser is facing. It'll only spawn hostile mobs if you're not on peaceful. In the case of tridents, uh, the dispenser will shoot the trident as if you have thrown it uh, in the direction that the dispenser is facing. This is only for Bedrock Edition. I'm in Java Edition, so you're going to have to uh, use your imagination. In the case of shears, a dispenser will attempt to shear an entity standing immediately in front of it. Uh, so if we use this dispenser that has shears in it, it will shear the sheep just like if the player had right-clicked the shears on the sheep. In the case of glass bottles, it depends what the dispenser is facing. So if there are empty glass bottles in these dispensers, I have a honeycomb that is, or sorry, a hive that is full of honey, and I have water source block, and then I have nothing. If I activate it, it will fill this water bottle with water. It will then take the honey out of the hive and put it into the bottle. And if there's nothing that the dispenser can do, it just throws it out as an item. So you want to be careful uh, not to do that. Likewise, if I activated this again, it actually throws now the water bottle out, and it also throws the honey bottle out. Um, as well, because they're not able to do anything, so it just throws it as an item. Uh, so watch out for that. You don't want to accidentally throw out water bottles when you don't want to. In the case of having water bottles in the dispenser, so now instead of an empty bottle, it's a water bottle, um, anything that can turn into mud will. Um, so we can turn that coarse dirt, in that case, into mud, but anything that could uh, turn into mud, it doesn't matter what block it is, will be able to turn to mud using the dispenser like that. It does use the water in the glass bottles, so then you'd have to extract it and put it back in if you want it to be automated. Now, just like with armor that's made for people, um, horse armor, saddles, and carpets for their respective animals can also be put on the animals using the dispensers. Um, so in the case of a tamed horse, uh, so this horse isn't wild, I can put horse armor on it by using the dispenser. I can also put saddles on pigs and other animals by using the dispensers, and you can also do it for carpets uh, for llamas, I believe. Now for animals that can have storage space, you can put chests in the dispenser and as long as the animal is tamed, you can add the storage space to the animal uh, as you would normally. For honeycombs, you can wax uh, any copper block using the dispensers if you have the honeycombs in the dispenser. Um, so I can use it right there. Um, it doesn't have any visual difference, but these are now waxed. Uh, my shaders are, I guess, a little bit more shiny uh, than normal. Uh, these are now waxed and they will not oxidize any further. For glowstone, you can use uh, glowstone in the dispensers to charge respawn anchors. So this one I just placed down. If I use it, it will fully charge it. Now much like fire charges, you can also shoot wind charges out of the dispenser. Um, so I can activate the lever and I can have the wind charge hit the ground, uh, hit the, these blocks behind me, and launch me into the air a little bit. I feel like this interaction has quite a lot of possibilities. Now, some things that the dispensers don't do, but I kind of wish they did, if you have a sapling in the dispenser, it will not place the sapling. It will just throw it as an item. Um, likewise, if you have any sort of seed and it's in front of farmland, it will not automatically plant your seeds. Um, as well as if you have an axe and you have unstripped logs, it will not strip the logs for you. Now, for the more technical aspects of the dispenser item itself, it will only emit items on the rising edge of the redstone going into it. Um, and the rising edge means if the redstone signal goes from off to being on, that is the rising edge. 
Uh, it will not keep emitting items if you hold the signal on, and it also won't emit anything if it goes from on to being off. So it's only the rising edge of the signal there. Now the item itself, uh, the dispenser itself is opaque, which means if I put a signal going into it, I can grab the signal on the other side, whereas a transparent block uh, will not do that. Um, so it's opaque in that sense. Now, if you're in Java edition, the dispenser is one of the few items that has quasi connectivity. And what quasi connectivity means is if the block above it would be powered, uh, doesn't matter if there's something there that is powered, but if it would be powered, then it gets powered itself as well. Um, so an easy way to show this is I can power the block two blocks above it. Um, so this gold block is being powered by the redstone dust. Then the glass block would be powered if there was something there, which means that the dispenser is going to be powered. Um, now, if I turn this on, we see that it doesn't emit anything. Uh, this is because in this orientation, it's not receiving a block update. I have to give it a block update and then it will get the memo to do something. Um, this is just cause quasi connectivity is really weird and it doesn't block update it if you do exactly this situation. One of the things that I use quasi connectivity for mainly is if you have uh, two dispensers you want to power or pistons or whatever, um, you can put a repeater going into the top one and it will also power the bottom one. So I could do that and we can see that it powers both of them. Um, in Bedrock Edition, Quasi connectivity isn't a thing, so this would only power the top dispenser and you would have to use redstone dust instead in order to power both of them. Um, the repeaters thing can be very useful in Java edition. Uh, it's not really a huge issue though because in Java edition, um, you have to use a repeater instead of using just dust because this won't power the top one. Whereas in Bedrock edition, the dust goes into it and then it doesn't matter anyways. An observer facing into the dispenser will read the state of the dispenser. And what that means is if you turn the dispenser on and activate it, uh, it'll eject an item and it will also power the observer. Now the observer will also power if I turn the power off. Um, so the dispenser did not eject any items, but the observer still powered itself. Uh, so be aware of that. The observer will observe more the block state rather than if the dispenser actually did anything. Now, pistons in Java Edition cannot push dispensers at all. Um, so I'm in Java Edition, so my piston isn't going to be able to do anything. However, in Bedrock Edition, you can push the dispensers with pistons and you can pull them as well, um, which offers a little bit more flexibility. All right, guys, that'll be it for this video. Um, I hope I didn't miss any interactions. If I did, feel free to leave a comment with it. Um, and also feel free to leave a comment if there is interaction that doesn't exist that you think would be very useful. I hope you have a wonderful day and I hope to see you next time.